What's up everybody? In today's video we are taking a look at the 16GB iPod Touch and some of the games that I was able to get installed on this thing like a decade later. So if you didn't see my unboxing, I picked up a 16GB model of the 5th generation iPod Touch, aka the one without a camera that had iOS 6, a fresh clean install of it. And it's interesting because, as you know, iOS 6 is pretty old. I actually have a full-fledged fifth generation that I never updated from iOS 6 as well. And it's just got a random assortment of apps on here. But I was curious what kind of games and nostalgic games at that that I could get installed on this iPod Touch all this time later. So let's take a quick look at some of the apps and just kind of go down memory lane here, see what works, see what doesn't. Um, you remember when they used to put the new badge on the top of all the games? Like you'd download a game or an app of any sort and it would just say new on the top corner? That's so interesting to me. I forgot about that actually. And kind of wish they'd bring it back. That was kind of a nice little thing when you downloaded an app that had this new banner to check it out. Um, so let's jump into 2048. This was a fun game that used to kill a lot of time for me. I remember playing this game a lot. So you'd go in here and the whole gist of this, let's just jump right into it, was to combine these tiles together to get as close to 2048 as possible. So you'd use strategies and you'd move tiles around until you could get everything combined into that 2048 tile. So I was able to get this installed and I was pretty excited to jump down memory lane once again and give this game another go all this time later. So 2048 seems to be working fine and good. I also was able to install Flappy Bird. This is truly nostalgic right there. I did a whole video on Flappy Bird and if you're interested you should definitely check it out but it works perfectly fine on this fifth generation touch. You're able to just you know play Flappy Bird right here and I think it's gonna be fun to see if I can get my high score above one. As you may recall Flappy Bird was a super popular game around the time that this iPod debuted. So it's interesting that I'm still able to get it up and running on here. I guess that makes sense. Um, if you had installed Flappy Bird and the developer account hasn't been suspended, then you're good to go. So I was able to install it on this fifth gen iPod Touch and I'm super excited about that. I wish that I was able to get Infinity Blade, but that's not possible. That's one of the most nostalgic games of all iPods, uh, but you can't get it on here, which is unfortunate. I was able to download Tetris though, so I've got Tetris. A, a lot of these have been optimized for the four inch display, which is really cool too. I remember when this thing first came out, you used to get those black bars at the top and the bottom when they had started to develop everything. So we'll just jump right through here. Um, oh, we got to select our age first, so we'll put in, oops, uh, good enough, seven, seven years old. So we'll put Tetris on its paces and see if we can get it playing. The graphics actually look really good on this display. Um, the iPod Touch display has always been an amazing screen, so we'll do just one touch marathon here and see how that goes uh, and it is looking really really good even all this time later so let's see how the gameplay goes it looks pretty simple so you can just kind of quick tap here and get your bricks lined up so quick easy mobile game of Tetris I remember Tetris kind of being one of those very first games that I ever played on a mobile device you used to be able to play this on flip phones and stuff like that for free or at least I think it was free, I could be wrong, uh, but you were able to download and play it on like the Nokia and stuff like that. So just kind of a classic, always been a great mobile game and I'm interested to see that it works really well on this iPod Touch all this time later. Uh, and then I was able to get Real Racing 3 on there. Real Racing 3 totally brings back some memories for me. I used to play this game all the time and to see that there is a version that's compatible with this iPod just blew my mind. I was like, no way, iOS 6 all this time later, uh, still working perfectly fine with Real Racing 3. Super, super cool. As you can see, taking a little bit of time to get it up and loaded here, but uh, not, not too bad. I guess considering the fact that this thing only has like half a gig of RAM and we're still able to plow through this pretty intense game that came out again back in 2012. This was like some cutting edge graphics on this iPod. 
So it's crazy. You can see it's rendering like full 3D graphics right here on an iPod from 2012 and it still looks good all this time later. I'm not going to get too far into it, but this game was really revolutionary at the time for utilizing the accelerometer inside of the iPod Touch and made for a really cool gameplay. And then Real Racing 2, again another game brought to you by the same developers as the previous one. And this one I remember coming out at the time and being a really popular one. You'll see it loads up quite a bit faster but it also features those super great uh, graphics and things like that. So this was the version that I remember launching right about the time that the original version of the 5th gen iPod Touch came out, the one with the rear you know, colors and camera and stuff. I think they came out about the same time. It may have been out a little bit before that, but it's awesome to see it. Again, it works really well because it's compatible with that accelerometer and it was a lot of fun to play racing games on the iPod, especially with the powerhouse that it was. Plants vs. Zombies, that's one that was a super popular game at the time. I remember being addicted to playing Plants vs. Zombies. It was such a fun game, and it's great to see it on here. Again, super fun, um, addicting game. You had to save the yard from the zombies that were coming in by planting various plants and saving the house from the impending zombie attack by building up your different, you know, plants and gardens and things like that to defend off these zombies that were coming in. So yeah, that's Plants vs. Zombies. That was a game that I remember playing all the time. Again, let's just go ahead and I'll put my name in on here. Whoops, put my name in just like that. And we can jump right into adventure mode here on Plants vs. Zombies and start playing it again such a memorable game i remember playing this game with my friends when i'd go places if we were on long bus rides or whatever would sit back would play a little plants vs zombies so it's gonna be fun having this ipod here to play some nostalgic games so you just you basically you had your house you had the zombies that were coming in to attack the house and you'd roll out some grass and start planting some seeds and protecting the house from the zombie attack so let's move on over to the next app that I installed on here. I've got Rubik's Cube. This one, I don't remember using all that much, but I think it was a paid app at the time. Um, and we'll go ahead and get into this. I've never been one that can do a Rubik's Cube, but you can pick from all different kinds of Rubik's Cubes and just have one going at all times. It'll scramble it up and then, no, I'm good. Um, it would go ahead and give you a full Rubik's Cube. If I'm not mistaken, it even just asked me, but you could actually go ahead and set it up to where you could rotate the device and use that as the way to walk around the Rubik's Cube. Another one that really showed off that accelerometer in the iPod and was kind of cool at the time. Smash Hit, I remember this app taking off at the era of the iPod Touch. I want to say, uh, this particular game came out in like 2013 or so, and we all, I remember playing this game all the time. This was one of my absolute favorite games, and I don't think it's ever been updated since it first came out, but it was a really, really fun game. I, I'm not sure that it even still exists in the App Store, but you'd basically just hit these little targets and stuff like that. If it is still out, I don't think there's been any updates to it. It's exactly the same game with exactly the same features as it had when it first came out. And it was just super, super fun. I remember playing this game all the time and even actually being one of the games that I unlocked as a premium game. I don't remember how much it cost to unlock it. I just remember getting annoyed by not being able to beat the levels and deciding that premium might actually be worth it on that game so that I could save my progress. Tiny Wings was another super, super popular game at the time. Tiny Wings actually has found itself back in Apple Arcade, and you can download and play Tiny Wings uh, even today on your latest iPhones. If you have the iPhone 14 Pro and you have Apple Arcade, uh, Tiny Wings 
perfectly compatible with it and I think it's called Tiny Wings Plus now or something like that but another super nostalgic game I remember playing Tiny Wings again with my friends growing up in like middle and high school and stuff and probably more middle school on the iPod touch days but yeah super super cool you just kind of held and collected momentum with your little tiny bird and whatnot in the game super duper fun loved playing Tiny Wings Angry Birds Seasons, uh, another one that I remember using quite a bit. Angry Birds, just super, super uh, prevalent at the time. Everybody had Angry Birds. I had a folder of Angry Birds games. I really had all of them. Angry Birds, Angry Birds Rio, Angry Birds Space, all those different ones that they came out with. They are all the same, just kind of different skinned versions of it. I remember buying the HD versions for the iPad and everything, and then Angry Birds just kind of fell off the face of the earth, but you'll see there's just tons and tons of different skins and packs that you could choose from as you're playing the game. So we'll jump in here, see if we can maybe get a round of Angry Birds going on here and give it a go, see what we can do. So you'll see those classic Angry Birds, the different birds that come with the game. And everybody, I think, remembers this game. This was just like the go-to game back in 2010, 2012, ballpark, somewhere within those couple of years. Fruit Ninja, this is another one that has made a comeback. I actually have Fruit Ninja on my iPad Mini, uh, sixth generation, which is super nice. It's part of the Apple Arcade suite, so if you have Apple Arcade, you can get it. This is an older version of Fruit Ninja. It looks like a special edition fifth anniversary one, which who knows how long ago the fifth anniversary was. It's just the most recent compatible version with this particular iPod Touch, so it's kind of interesting to see this, you can jump in here and play the original version of Fruit Ninja, and you'll see all the different modes, and I want to say, I think my favorite is Zen. You can just kind of quick sit down here and play Angry Birds for a little bit. Just swipe here to play the game, and, or I'm sorry, play Fruit Ninja, and the fruit will just kind of pop up, and I remember playing this quite a bit. I used to do it all the time. I love playing this game. It was just nice fun casual game or you could put it into a competitive mode but I remember upgrading my blades and everything else on the game and being super super into it. RC Heli is more one for me. Here's one where you can see how it actually letterboxes the screen down to the size of the older iPod touches so it actually sits in the size of the fourth generation touch here so if you look at them side by side you can see that this one is squished down. Um, I remember playing this game quite a bit. You basically would just go in and you could fly helicopters. They had another one that allowed you to fly planes and that was the whole gist of the game was just being able to fly different things around, different RC things around and that was it. Uno, another fun one. I think this one actually also has been making a comeback on the um, App Store again with Apple Arcade, and I think it is again becoming another popular return game for Apple Arcade customers. This one was just a fun one because you could jump in there and you could also play it as multiplayer with other friends who had iPods. Angry Birds Rio, this is another one, I guess. Angry Birds Rio, it doesn't seem that it actually works, which is too bad. And Asphalt 7, this one's a lot like Real Racing for me, if not even more prevalent with my usage of the device. I played Asphalt 7 all the time. This was one of my favorite racing games. It was one of my favorite devices when I was utilizing a new iPod or hanging out with people and showing off what the iPod Touch could really do then I would open up Asphalt 7 and let people try it out and play Asphalt 7 on my iPod. And I love this game. Multiplayer was fun. Um, any of my other friends that had iPods, you could connect two of them together and play Asphalt 7 on both devices if you were within the same area, which was really fun to race against each other. But it's definitely... Uh, still a really fun game. I even have this on my Apple TV and I'll play it on the Apple TV when people come over and whatnot. So it just had different cities and different styles of races and was a really, really fun game that you could play on your iPod or your iPhone. Temple Run took the world by storm. 
you can't not have an iPod and not have Temple Run on it. This thing became the number one most downloaded app of all time, and it was just, it was such a fun, unique new game at the time. Kind of an endless runner and a new genre to the App Store that was quickly added upon by like subway surfers and stuff like that that copied the style. But I think Temple Run was the first time I ever saw anything quite like it, and it was a really fun game. I remember all my friends had that one. Unblock Me was another one that I enjoyed playing. It was kind of a good one to play while you were just like listening to music, wanted something mindless to do. You could put it in relax mode, and the whole point was to get this little red brick out of the maze that was created by sliding it out and moving these other bricks around. So it would have the exit path blocked, and what you had to do was, if we could get past this, get the little red brick out by dragging the other bricks out of the way so that you could clear a path to get out the little red brick. And lastly, Gravity Guy, if we can get this one opened up. This one was so much fun. The whole point of it um, was to jump in here and you controlled the gravity and you could do single or multiplayer. So again, a lot of the games I remember playing were all multiplayer games that was fun to play with the other people that I was hanging out with at the time would all get our iPods and get together and play some multiplayer games on them and this one was one of them that everybody just loved to play so if we can jump through this menu system pretty quick here this is Gravity Guy it would just kinda jump up and down flip gravity up and down depending on where you were at and you'd avoid the obstacles by tapping on the screen. So it's cool to see that I was able to get this many games working in 2022 on this iPod Touch from a decade ago. So that was a quick rundown memory lane. If you enjoyed this style of video, this kind of free form, just talking about stuff, let me know down below. But hopefully you enjoyed this video and had a nice nostalgic trip um, running through this iPod. So thanks for watching. Catch you soon.